is are you known in hell? And you might say, no, I don't want to be known in hell. But I'm going to tell you why you should be known in hell. Now, does the devil know you? Does he know you? Yes. You know, I think pastors, evangelists, deacons, teachers, moms, dads, uh, does he know us by name? And uh, first, we're going to see that it's important for us to be known in heaven. Second, we're going to see if we're known in hell. And in order to understand what I'm talking about, I'd like us to uh, go to Acts chapter 19, and we're going to read a portion of Scripture from the Word of God. Now, in Acts 19 verses 11 to 15, it says, Now God worked unusual miracles by the hands of Paul, so that even handkerchiefs or aprons were brought from his body to the sick, and the diseases left them, and the evil spirits went out of them. So this was something extraordinary. God was doing not only miracles through the hands of Paul, but even the clothes that he wear, even aprons that were in contact with his body. I guess you, you will go to the restaurant and, and you know, even the napkins were anointed just by touching the lips of Paul. So everything he, this man touched was anointed. And uh, it says that the diseases will leave and even the evil spirits. Listen church, we have this kind of anointing because God is with us. We don't need to go to the witch doctor. We don't need to go to those places. We have the power of God here at the church. And it happened on verse 13. We see that when some of the itinerant Jewish exorcists took it upon themselves to call the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had evil spirits, saying, We exorcise you by the Jesus whom Paul preaches. So here they were just using the name of Jesus just like the church. It says on verse 14, also there were seven sons of Siva, a Jewish chief priest, who did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? You see, these men were not known in hell. These men had, they didn't have the anointing of God. And when you don't have the anointing of God, you're not known in hell. But I'm, I'm, I'm here to tell you that you should be known in hell. I mean, when hell attacks you, they should know they're not attacking you, but they're attacking the Son of the living God. Because God loved you so much, He placed a hedge of protection around us. And when we walk in the anointing of God, it's not us, but we do things in the name of Jesus. We don't use just the name as a magic word, but we use the anointing and the power of God that is in our lives. God wants to bless you in such a way that you're known in heaven. Yes, your name is written in the, in the book of the Lamb. But also, your name should be known in hell. Because you cast out demons. You lay hands on the sick and they are healed. And it gets to a point when demons see you, they see Jesus. And they fly away from you. And they have to flee. And they have to leave. And they cannot stand in your presence. I want to walk in this kind of anointing. And the church should walk in this kind of anointing. Can I hear an amen? So the question is, why demons knew about Paul? Why did they knew about this man? And the answer is very simple. Paul had a secret. And Paul's secret was something awesome. It's that to be dead and alive at the same time. Amen. That was Paul's secret. He was dead and alive at the same time. How can you be known in hell? How can you be known in heaven? You need to die. You need to die for your old self. You need to die for your old nature. And Paul had this secret. He died for himself when he accepted Jesus Christ as his Lord, as his Lord and Savior. And as he died for himself, he was known in hell because he walked under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Are you known in hell? Now, in Galatians chapter 2, this same Paul wrote from verses 19 to 20, he said, For, though, for through the law I am dead to the law, that I might, I might live unto God. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which now I live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. So here's the secret. Here's the secret to be known in hell. Here's the secret that Paul had. He said, though I'm, uh, I'm under the law and I'm dead to the law, then I might live to Christ. I am crucified with Christ. Are you crucified with Christ? You know, when Jesus Christ died for you at Calvary, He paid the price for your sins. He paid the price that you couldn't pay, so that you might be here and you might say, I'm a child of the living God. 
And when you learn that Christ lives in you, then when demons look at you, they shouldn't see Muriel or Francis or Joe, they shouldn't see Lucy, they shouldn't see Joanne, they, they should see Jesus in you. Amen? Amen. Can you say Christ in me? Christ in you. The hope of glory. The hope of glory. You have Christ in you. And this is good news. And then he said finally, let no, no one cause me trouble, for I bear on my body the marks of Jesus. He bared the marks of Jesus. He bared in his body the marks of Jesus. When you have the marks of Jesus, the devil will see Jesus in you. You know, uh, some kids now, they don't want to go to school with, a, with a, any kind of t-shirt. He has to say Nike, Adidas, a Reebok, something. He has to have a mark, he has to have something that will uh, acknowledge that it's an expensive piece of wardrobe. That is something cool, that is something that, that is, a, a, you know, a, a part of, the, of the, their clique, of their group. And they need to have these brands and these things. So you take them to Walmart and they say, I don't want those shoes. I don't want Walmart shoes, I want the expensive ones. And you say, but they're the same thing. But they will say, no, they're not the same thing. Because those, they have the mark of Nike. Those, they have the, mar the marks of Adidas. And when I show them, I'm recognized by my peers as who I am. I'm a cool guy, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, a good girl, I'm a nice person. Because I wear these brands. So let me tell you that today, that we should bear the marks of Christ in our life. Can I hear an amen? So that's why Paul said, I, let no one cause me trouble, for I bear on my body the marks of Christ. Do you bear the marks of Christ? Are you known in hell? Now, let me tell you four things that make Paul known in hell. This is the second part of my message. There are four things that make Paul known in hell. And the first thing that I want to mention to you is that Paul understood the wrath of, of, of the Holy God upon sin. And uh, I'm going to read the verse. It says on 2 Corinthians 5, 11, Knowing the terror of the Lord, He persuaded men. So Paul had great fear for God. He knew that God wasn't just a figure of speech. He knew that God can be sometimes even upset with people. And God was really upset with him. Have you ever found yourself in a situation, in a position in which God is upset with you? I did many times. Because I've lived a life away from God, I, I didn't care about God, I didn't care about the things of God, I even cursed churches and the things of God, and I could feel the, uh, 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 that something was missing, and I felt the wrath of God upon me. Now, Paul knew this secret, that he, he knew the terror of the Lord, and it's the terror of the Lord that will persuade, persuade man to follow Him. Now, a second secret that Paul had was the power of the blood of Jesus. He knew the power of the blood of Jesus. That's why demons will flee from him. And we start by reading that even the aprons, even the napkins, anything that was in touch with Paul's body, when they placed those pieces of cloth uh, uh, over the sick, the demons will flee. The, the, the sick, sickness will disappear. Why? Because of the anointing of God. And the secret, one of the greatest secrets was the power of the blood of Jesus. Now the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 7 verse 25, Wherefore, He is also able to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by Him, seeing the ever live to make intercession for them. We know that Jesus Christ, I know this is old English, but what He's saying here is that God is able to save us. God is able to save you. Even though He can be upset with you at times, even though He's a, he's a father, and the father sometimes will get upset with his children, but God loves you, and He makes intercession for you. The third secret of, of uh, God's anointing over Paul was the blessed assurance that to be absent from the body, he will, he will be present with the Lord. By other words, he had the assurance, when we die, this body will be left behind, but we will meet the Lord, we will be with the Lord forever. In 2 Corinthians 5.8, uh, Paul pulled the right of stripes, imprisonments, fastings, shipwrecks, snake bites, weariness, pain as a light affliction. He said these are light things, these are small things. Now we all have afflictions, we all suffer infirmities, we all suffer persecution, we all suffer many things in life. And I'm sure you've suffered these things. But Paul says, these things are nothing. This is a light affliction. I will have a reward. And my reward will be given by the Lord. And finally, 
The fourth thing that I want to mention to you, that was Paul's secret, was the final truth. And what is the final truth? That we all must appear before the judgment seat of Christ. And we will receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. This is written in 2 Corinthians 5, 10. Also Romans 14, 10. It says, for we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. When you have this assurance, when you know who you are, when you walk in the anointing of God, demons have to flee and you will be known in hell. So here's the question. Are you known in hell? Are you known in hell? And you might say, I don't want to be known in hell. I want hell to ignore me. So I have news for you. Hell will not ignore you, ever. Hell will not ignore you. Hell will attack you. But when you're known in hell as a child of the living God, hell cannot touch you. And these are good news. You want better news? I don't have better news. We, we know much about all these things. Now, are you known in hell for what? Some people are known in hell for the wrong reasons. I guess Adolf Hitler was known in hell for sending a lot of people to hell and a lot of people to heaven. But he was a mass murderer. So a mass murderer would be known in hell. Uh, a, a Satanist will be known in hell for the wrong reasons. Now, let me just tell you a brief story. We all know about what happened in Libya recently and that uh, dictator Muammar Gaddafi was uh, uh, deposed and killed. But uh, years ago, when uh, Britain condemned Libya for the Lockerbie uh, bombing, you know, the airplane that fell, uh, Muammar Gaddafi was so upset with England that he decided to print a map of the world without the British Islands. So, if, if you went to Libya, it was possible to buy a map of the world without Britain, without the, the UK. Because he decided to ignore the UK, and he decided that UK doesn't exist. So, in their books, in their history, books of, of history, in Libya, UK was a forbidden uh, word. It's like, it doesn't exist. And he printed the map of the world where you see the, the British Islands, but he printed without. England, without Scotland, without Wales, without Ireland, just an empty spot over there. Because he decided, I'm going just to ignore it. Now, you can ignore hell, but let me tell you that hell is a real place. Some people live like hell doesn't exist. Like uh, one day, you know, this will be over, game over, and that's it. But let me tell you, after we die, there's two places where you can go. Heaven or hell. Which one will we choose? Some people are not in hell because they're uh, disciples of Satan. But some people, some, some others are not in hell because they decided to live with God. Others are not because they walk with Jesus Christ. So, my message today is, are you not in hell? Decide to be not in hell as Paul was. When demons saw Paul, they had to flee. When the Holy Spirit is in the life of the believer, we learn this principle that we can be dead and alive at the same time. So let me finish and wrap up the message with this question. Are you known in hell? And by now, you know what I mean by being known in hell. But does, the he the, does hell know you? as Jesus' disciple, or hell knows you as someone that is constantly falling into sin, into the trap, uh, the traps of the enemy. We should be known in hell like Paul was known in hell. You see, the sons of that priest came to, the, to that man that was demon-possessed, and the devil spoke and said, We know Paul, we know Jesus, but who are you? And, uh, and those men were beat up. Uh, I, I, like the, the, I, I didn't read the rest of the story. There were seven. And they got a beat in such a way that that one man took off his clothes and they were bare naked, running through the streets of, of, of the city and everybody was laughing at them because they saw what happened. But then they thought about it and the great fear came upon them because they realized something. Paul has a great power, more than these seven men. These seven men were defeated by one man and Paul will just say, Get out of this man. They will just bring the aprons from his body and people were healed. 
We should be known in hell by, by being disciples of Jesus Christ. We need to learn this secret, being dead and alive at the same time. Amen? Amen. So I'm going to invite you to do a simple prayer. And the, the best prayer you can do is the prayer where you surrender your heart to the Lord. And when you surrender your life, heart to the Lord, it's like saying, God, I want to die for myself. And I want to live for you. And when you do this, God promised that He will bless you, that He will adopt you as, as His children, and that He will ad adopt you as His child, and He will give, him, give you His Holy Spirit. Are you willing to receive His Holy Spirit? So let us all stand, and I want to finish by praying with you. And if there's something that is bothering you, if you're being annoyed by hell, if you're being persecuted like Paul was, you, you see Paul said, you know, these persecutions, these things, this is nothing. This is nothing. Because there's a prize that is waiting for me. And Paul was known in heaven, Paul was known in hell. I want to be known in hell as a, a child of the living God. When demons come, they will say, oh, no, don't touch you. Don't touch you. Don't touch you. When demons come to you, they'll say, oh no, I cannot touch her. Because she's a child of God. Because he's a child of God. And when you have this authority, you can say to the demons of hell, in the name of Jesus, just leave. Just leave. And they cannot stay or stand in your presence. When you have this anointing, your home can be transformed. Your loved ones can be transformed. Something is about to happen here in Ganwalk. God wants to bring the anointing of the Holy Spirit in such a way that when we walk through these streets, we'll be like Paul, we'll be like Peter, we'll be like what, what is promised to us, uh, uh, to each one of us in the Bible. We shall be known in hell as children of the living God. Do you want to do this prayer? Just bow your, your head and just repeat after me. 